Hi everybody, Simona here from Vector Twist. I'm really excited because today is the first start of our 12 Days of Christmas series. What that means is I will be releasing every single day for the next 12 days small tutorials with lots of tips and tricks. So the first one is going to be about the gradient tool. Now the gradient tool in Illustrator can be really frustrating, especially when you want to change colors. Or if you would like to pick a particular color range in your gradient. But before it gets too confusing, let me just explain what I mean. Now here, for example, we have a shape in our pine trees that has a gradient applied. We have two sliders, one on the left and one on the right. Now if I want to update one of the gradient stops with the color, I can just select it, I can double click it, and then from the swatches panel I can choose my colors. Or I can also go either to RGB or CMYK from the drop down and then move the slider around and change it. What if I want to pick a color directly out of a swatch I have created? Now if I highlight the shape with my gradient and then make use of the eyedropper tool, the shortcut for this is I on the keyboard, and then select a color in my swatch, it will update the whole shape and make a solid color for my fill. Of course this is not what we want. I would just like to update the gradient slider to stop here, just with the screen. Now there are several ways to go about it. We could either select our swatch, open the swatches panel, click on the color fill here and then drag it into our swatches panel, then go back, select our shape and then drag from the swatches panel onto the slider our color. But there's a much quicker way. First we want to highlight our shapes, we'll click on the gradient slider to activate it, then I'm switching to the eyedropper tool, I'll hold the shift key and then I'm going to click on the swatch that I want to pick the color from and watch what happens. As you can see, I just updated the color in my gradient slider in my gradient here. And all we had to do is just press the shift key on the keyboard and then use the eyedropper tool to pick the color. Just to show you again, if I pick the color on the other side, I'm still active on my gradient slider. I press and hold the shift key, click on the swatch and I updated it. Now the same way works with an image. Now for example, I have an image here of pine tree branches. I still have my gradient slider activated. I press and hold the shift key and then I select a light green out of this image and it will apply this color to my gradient slider. This is really an easy way to switch the colors around in your gradients. Now what if you wanted to update it on all of our shapes, just make sure you select them, activate the gradient slider again, switch to the eyedropper tool, shortcut for that is the eye on the keyboard, press and hold the shift key, and go back to the image and sample the color. Now I would like to show you one last trick. If you would like to sample a specific color in a gradient, you would think you choose the eyedropper tool. So I switch to the eyedropper tool and then I'd say I would like to have not the dark green here, but something in the middle. So I select, but what happens is I've just selected the gradient that is applied to the shape. Now again, I can use the shift key here. If I press and hold the shift key and then go back to the same area, watch what happens. I click and select and here in the color fill, it has given me the color that is exactly where I clicked on the shape. The only thing we have to pay attention to is that we do not select the shape where we want to sample from. For example, if I select the shape, then choose the eyedropper tool and then try to do the same thing, press and hold the shift key and click, it will just apply the color that I've picked right from the middle. So our gradient is gone, but I do get the color. So in order to just pick the color, do not select the shape where you would like to sample from. And this is it. This is our first small tutorial of our series 12 Days of Christmas. If you liked it, please leave a comment below and do not forget to subscribe to the channel here. And at the same time, don't forget to head over to vectortwist.com and check out more tutorials and articles on the blog. And I'll see you tomorrow with our next tip, so stay tuned.